The Canadian Subarctic. A harsh environment with short winter days, seeing temperatures plunge below negative 60 degrees Celsius. Deep snow covers much of the landscape, making survival here almost impossible. Yet, there's one predator that's evolved a set of tools that allow it to thrive in these extreme conditions. While few have ever seen one, this region's apex predator rules with a huge, fluffy, padded fist. This is the winter ghost, the Canada lynx. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufo. You're watching Animal Logic, and this is a Canada lynx. Seeing a Canada lynx in real life was an immense privilege, but there are lots of other animals I love to learn about by watching docs on my new favorite discovery, Magellan TV. There are so many docs to see there, with over 20 hours of new content added weekly. You really get the best bang for your buck out of all premium documentary streaming services, especially because, unlike other services, 4K is always included in your subscription. And there's no ads at all. Magellan TV is all about the drama of real life, from the frozen forests of the Canadian Arctic to the jungles of Asia and the depths of the sea. Animals battle for survival every day. Some of those animals are really rare, which is why I loved watching Last Chance to See, which follows Stephen Fry as he looks for some of the most endangered animals in the world. Check out try.magellantv.com slash animalogic for a special offer. Get a one month free trial. Plus, if you're looking for an easy gift with great value, Magellan TV also offers membership gift cards available all year round. Give the gift of TV worth watching. Great for any holiday or last minute occasion. The Canada lynx is the most northern dwelling wildcat in the world. Found mostly in Canada and Alaska, its range is massive and more northerly than any other feline, with its cousin, the Eurasian lynx, being a very close second. The Canada lynx's range is limited by the tree line, relying on the cover of foliage to hide their approach from their prey. As climate change is warming the globe, the northern edge of their range will expand as it becomes warm enough for trees to grow, making the Canada lynx one of the few species that benefits from climate change, at least in this one very specific instance. To get a closer look at them, we traveled to the boreal forests of the Yukon during an early winter cold snap. Temperatures were balmy, peaking at about minus 45 degrees Celsius, but the frozen noses and toes were worth it to see one of the most iconic yet elusive cats in the world. Ah, we finally made it all the way to the Yukon. This is the furthest north I have ever been. We're here to look for some of North America's most incredible cold climate creatures. The Canada lynx's range overlaps with the cougar around the slopes of the mountains of the Pacific Northwest. But luckily, they avoid conflict by going after different prey, usually. Cougars can weigh up to 100 kilograms and routinely hunt for sheep, goats, and deer, which can be even larger than they are. Canada lynx are much smaller, about the size of an English cocker spaniel with a maximum weight of 15 kilograms. The Canada lynx is the second largest member of their genus, after the Eurasian lynx, but they're much larger than their other two cousins, the endangered Iberian lynx and the bobcat, which is technically a lynx. Oh, look at those fluffy tails. This might seem surprising, because at first sight, they look like large house cats. But they're basically just a thick coat of fur wrapped around four stilts. Their fur is about 10 centimeters long in the winter. So if you were to poke one, your finger would disappear in their fur. 
and then you'd lose it. You shouldn't poke a lynx. Hashtag science. These frosty felines have extra long hind limbs, but they're not designed for a long distance chase. What they are good for is bounding out of the snow and pouncing on their prey. Living in environments full of ice and snow for most of the year makes chasing impractical. So Canada lynx, much like foxes, polar bears, and other northern carnivores, are ambush predators. But before going out on the hunt, you need a big stretch to limber out. Stretch. Oh, that's good. They use their amazing sense of smell and hearing to find their prey's dens. They wait patiently for them to come out, and then they strike. This lynx is on the prowl. Just beyond the tree line, it spotted its next meal. A mallard. It waits patiently for the mallard to get within striking distance. Its gray coat camouflages the lynx perfectly against a tree. And then it pounces. It quickly snaps the mallard's neck, punctures its throat, and carries it off into the woods to devour. The lynx calls the boreal forest its home and never really travels beyond the tree line into the tundra because it is so closely reliant on its food sources in the forest. Canada lynx are one of the most specialized predators on Earth. One single prey species can make up to 97% of their diet in parts of their range. For Canada lynx living in those areas, their lives depend on the deaths of snowshoe hares. This reliance on snowshoe hares is particularly important in the northern part of their range, where there isn't much else to eat. An average lynx catches three hares a week, and when there are too many lynx, this causes a hare population collapse. Every eight to 11 years, snowshoe hare populations dip below a critical point, and the local lynx are unable to get enough food to survive. Snowshoe hare density can fall from over 2,300 hares per square kilometer to about 12 hares per square kilometer in under two years. That's a 99.99% decline in the span it took to reboot Spider-Man. The lynx are then forced to leave the area, sometimes traveling up to a thousand kilometers in search of food. They will have no babies for up to two years. Many lynx starve during this period. Some die of natural causes exacerbated by the lack of food, and others are forced to go for more dangerous prey and end up dying. This causes a collapse in lynx populations, which eventually leads to a recovery of the snowshoe hares. Then the lynx return, they start having babies, and the cycle starts anew. All of this has happened before. All of this will happen again. These cats only live where snowshoe hares are abundant, and because they face the same environmental challenges, they have convergently evolved to be very similar. The old saying, you are what you eat, does seem to apply to the Canada lynx because it shares a few adaptations with its main prey, the snowshoe hare. One of the biggest issues for small animals in these regions is how to get around when there are several feet of snow on the ground for over half of the year. Getting stuck in a snowbank can easily be fatal. The lynx's paws are truly massive. This helps them distribute their weight across the snow and acts very much like a snowshoe. Yet another thing it has in common with a snowshoe hare. They're up to 10 centimeters across, which is cartoonishly huge for an animal their size. It would be like a beagle having paws the size of paperbacks. They have short tails and ears to reduce heat loss. 
and they have two layers of densely packed fur to keep them warm at temperatures as cold as minus 60 degrees Celsius. Here in the Yukon, we were lucky to see a brand new mom. It is extremely beautiful here, but it's just as cold as it is pretty. Everything is just frosted and dusted with snow. <sighs> Apparently there's giant mountains here. I just can't see them yet through all the snow. We arrived here in the Yukon pretty late last night, just past midnight. There's only about four hours of sunlight per day here. So we need to work fast, try and find some animals, get some good footage. We're about to go see some Canada lynx, and I am so beyond excited. These animals are one of my favorites on the planet. Oh my god, here they come. There's Mama and her kitten. Go! Oh. Yeah. The mating season is spring, and babies are born in early summer. So this kitten is about five months old. She'll stay with her mom until next spring, but won't become sexually mature until the following year. At this age, she can go out with mom on her hunts. Oh, that's a feisty little kitten. She's trying to snag the meat away from her own mom. Snowshoe hares are still the main priority, but they won't reject carrion or other easy to catch prey like grouse. Canada lynx are more active at night, but their great senses of smell and hearing can alert them to roadkill or other available prey. In this case, it's the remains of a bird. At night, when they're out on the hunt, they're more likely to run into other lynxes in their range who are doing the same thing. These conflicts can get... awkward. We get it. You don't like each other. The Canada lynx has disappeared from the most southerly limits of its range, but is still relatively abundant in most of Canada and Alaska. It's considered a threatened species in the contiguous 48 states, but it has been successfully reintroduced to Rocky Mountains in Colorado, and there, their populations are growing. If you live somewhere near snowshoe hares, keep an eye out for one of the world's most unique, beautiful and mysterious cats. You could be in the presence of a Canada lynx. Being this close to a mama lynx and her cub was incredibly heartwarming, and we couldn't get enough. So we left the Yukon and drove 400 kilometers to Alaska to meet up with Steve Kroschel, who happens to be friends with a big male lynx. So, for the second time this week, I am hanging out with a Canada lynx. Our first stop here at the Crossel Nature Center is to see a lynx. They've got a male one here and his name is Lennox. This is the land of misfit animals. Walk with me, Danielle. Oh my goodness. I'm going to enter the lynx enclosure. Keep walking, Danielle. Come right with me now. We are friends, after all. Wish me luck. I will protect you. Now, I've never let anybody come in here before. Oh, really? No, 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 okay. this is a first. And you just surprised well, me. thank so you. Gonna, uh, thank I'm you for the honor. close the door. Now, it's a wild and dangerous animal. It's in a territory. You see? So go ahead and shoot. Shoot. You should be oh, safe. Oh, I am. You should be safe. And uh, This is such an honor to be sharing space with the lynx. Well, this is a dream. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, I worked with lynx my whole life. Yeah. The uh, ethology, you see. Now, what I'm going to do here, because he's curious, okay. walk over here on this right side, yep. so I'll protect you, I'm going to give him a space. And what we're going to do is just talk to him here. Now, I, I have various calls, and I'd like you to make these calls. Okay? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, the call is as follows. Yeah, see? Perfect. 
Okay, now toss this tidbit, uh, this part. Okay. Uh, your glove mitten's gonna be dirty, but that's that okay? That's fine, I can wash okay. them. Now I'm gonna call it, call it. Now no, toss it there. <laughs> Make that call again, Danielle. No. Okay, here's some more. No. Can I? Now throw it, throw it. That's it. I do spend all day talking to my cat in her language, so this isn't so different. Good job, Danielle. Thank you. You're building a relationship. Come on over here. Now just He's uh, really been marking this carcass, now, eh? Yeah. Now, now what you want to do yeah. is just purr. Because they do purr, you see. No, like this. Oh, that's a very different purr. Yeah. Well, you're building a relationship with the lynx. It's you like beautiful. that? It's one of my dreams come true, essentially. He did not become aggressive. So kind. See, you give off a frequency that the animal can understand. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Various people give off various frequencies, and animals can read it. They read honesty, sincerity, and all of these good things, all these virtues, and the animal can tell that. I believe in that very much. Um, all the animals I've ever had in my life have been great judges of character from the yeah. get-go. That's the lie detector of the wild. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the don't pet a lynx rule doesn't apply if you're Steve. Oh, oh, that was so sweet. Thanks for having us. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thanks for watching. See ya! Now everyone knows I'm a cat fanatic. But it's funny how all cats are kind of the same in their behaviors anyway. Watching a cat stretch, just, you know, you see one cat stretch, you've seen them all stretch. But I see so many similar behaviors between these lynxes and my cat Nebula at home. And certain things are just universal among felines. Like boxes. I'm sure if we put a box in this enclosure, they would jump in it without fail.